This is Keith Berkelheimer and this is Reef Bum TV. A while ago I put together a video on how to add a float switch to a skimmer cup lid to prevent overflows. Now, some of you may prefer to collect skimmate in a remote waste collection container, so in this video I will show you how to construct a do-it-yourself container that also includes an emergency shutoff float switch. I use ARM Aragonite for my calcium reactor, so I decided to use the container since it would make a great do-it-yourself waste collection canister. For the drain line into the container, I used a 3 quarter inch female PVC adapter as well as a 3 quarter inch male adapter with a 1 quarter inch barb at the end for the hose. As for the float switch setup, I purchased a standard float switch, a 5 16 inch nylon screw that was 2 and 1 quarter inch long, and 3 nylon nuts. The float switch cost $11 and the screw and nuts cost $2. A $40 Neptune Systems breakout box was also needed to hook the float switch up to my Apex controller. The top part of the float switch was threaded, so my plan was to utilize those threads to attach it to the nylon screw with one of the nuts. Now, the challenge was, I needed a hollow nylon screw to thread the wires of the float switch through it. Of course, I could not find one anywhere, but the guy at my local hardware store was able to drill a hole through the screw with a 1 8 inch drill bit. Let me tell you, this was not easy. Nonetheless, the hole was just big enough to fit both wires. More on how to rig the float switch in a few minutes. Okay, time to drill a couple of holes in the lid. I used a one inch spade bit to drill a hole for the three quarter inch male PVC adapter. And then a 5 16 inch drill bit for the hole for the float switch. I screwed in and secured the 3 quarter inch male adapter, it fit nice and snug. And then I screwed in the female adapter. And put the drain line tube on the barb. Next I inserted the nylon screw with one of the nuts through the top of the lid and added the second screw underneath the lid and snaked the wires through the hollowed out screw, pulling the float switch through until it was flush with the screw. The third nut was added to the float switch prior to this, so then it was just a matter of using the nut to connect the nylon screw to the float switch. And here is the finished product. As you can see, it is simple to unscrew the top to empty the container. Okay, now I am ready to connect the wires to the breakout box. There are two wires, so I connect one, it doesn't matter which one, to the ground terminal, and I connect the other to the switch one terminal. I then plug the adapter into the I.O. port on my Apex and move on to programming it into the system. As you can see on my Apex dashboard, switch one is closed because the float switch is in the down position. When water pushes it up, it would open up the switch. I already have the skimmer pump programmed into my Apex, so I'm simply going to open up that outlet and write a line of programming to shut my skimmer pump off when the switch is open as a result of an overflow. I enter in if SW1 open then off. I then write some code to alert me when an overflow occurs. For the sound, text, and email alarms I enter if SW1 open then on.
Many thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel to be alerted to my latest videos.